Hello, a croeso i listen toys. Here they are, but in travel and by their album Pimers or Super Furry Animals, rings around the world. Ah, uh, no, I'm not going to keep this up. Uh, right, hello and welcome. Um, for those of you very confused about what the fuck that was, uh, I I was speaking Welsh uh, because it's especially appropriate today as we are covering one of Wheels is possibly sort of. Uh, most sort of famous bands, uh, especially in the last 30, you know, or years or so. And that is Super Furry Animals. Uh, so this is episode two of Listen Toys. For those of you who watched episode one, you'll have known we chose this album. If not, welcome. Uh, this is a basic kind of music podcast thing where we pick an album every episode and we just sit down and discuss them, basically going through them track by track. Uh, and as with last episode and all of the podcasts I've been doing recently, I am joined by three guests, and that is Dan. Hello. Tom. How's it going? And Tim. Print home da. Hey, there we are. Um, so uh, we, don't worry, we will be keeping the Welsh to a minimum because uh, I would be thoroughly shocked if more than two people watching this uh, spoke Welsh. I like how you told all your listeners that you are speaking Welsh and not having a stroke. Yes, yeah. I well, honestly, right. I'm really interested and really curious to see because uh, YouTube does the auto-generated uh, subtitles or like captions. I'm yeah. really curious to see what YouTube's going to do for that because it is just going to have. I a mean, meltdown. it struggles with English. Yeah. Um. Uh. So right from the start, obviously, just a uh, just a clarification. The reason, obviously. All of us know about super furry animals, and we'll probably be making references throughout the episode. Is we all hail from the British country of Wales. Uh, hopefully, people watching vaguely knows where that is. Uh, vaguely know where that is. Uh, it's not a very well-known country, but that's not why we're here. Well, we are here today because we all went off and individually listened to the album by Super Furry Animals, uh, their fifth album called Rings Around the World, which, if I've edited correctly, should be on the screen and should have been from the start, really. Um, however, here to tell us a bit more about Super Furry Animals um, and, you know, a vague overview maybe of this album and possibly why he chose it uh, is Tom, who chose this as our choice. So, Tom, take it away. So, I've got a few notes on this. Uh, so, Super Furry Animals, uh, they formed in Cardiff, in 1993, um, the band consists of Griff Rees, Hugh Bunford, Gutto Price, uh, Kian Kirian, uh, and David Iwan. Um, it did at one point have the actor Rhys Evans in it as well, oh. um, but not, not anymore. Um, so... <laughs> Basically, made popular to me and probably the other people in here as well um, from constantly being referenced in GCSE Welsh. Yeah. Um, they are a bit niche uh, in terms of their popularity, but they have been mentioned in um, big, big kind of music reviews and stuff. So NME actually stated in a 2005 article... Uh, that there is a case for super, super furry animals to be the most important band of the past 15 years. And that's quite a statement, to be honest. Um, so the band is seen as being at the forefront of like a movement in the late 90s and early millennium called Cool Cymru. And basically, that was a movement where lots of young sort of filmmakers and musicians and stuff they tried to they tried to project Wales's image uh, internationally. The band is currently on hiatus. It has been since I think about twenty seventeen, and basically the band has actually reformed minus Griff Rees, uh with the na- with the name Das Coolies. Uh, okay. Which is oh, I've heard of they're that. like a electronic band. I haven't listened to them. Uh, Griff Rees has kind of done his own thing, and he's the front man of uh, Super Furry Animals. But yeah, he's quite a successful solo artist now. He oh. is. He is. Um, 
back in the early 2010s, well, just before 2010, he formed Neon Neon, uh, which were an electronic group, and they kind of did concept albums. Uh, so that was interesting. He's also collaborated with Gorillaz uh, oh. on the song Super Fast Jellyfish. Oh, really? In terms of, yeah, yeah, I didn't know Yo, that. Oh, okay. Um, in terms of genres, super furry animals are described as alternate rock, indie rock, electronica, uh, Britpop, power pop, and neo psychedelia. And I'm not going to lie, just a bit of a spoiler, I really felt the ne- neo psychedelia in this album. Hmm. Uh, so, as Radium was saying, Rings Around the World is the fifth album, and it was released on the 23rd of July 2001. And fun fact, uh, it was originally going to be called Text Messaging is Destroying the Pub Quiz as We Know It. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of like the facts I have on this. Uh, nothing particular on the album, but I'll just push you back yeah. over to Ridian. Yeah, that, that was that was really comprehensive. Fair play. Um, yeah, I, I, I genuinely... Uh, so I intentionally went in dark with this because um because i i want listen twice as well to kind of be something where we'll listen to an album we had no knowledge of you know and completely dive in so i i kept myself closed off from knowing anything about this so that was that was really informative thank you tom that was uh i made sure to like read that up after i listened to it as not to prejudice yes my kind of view on the album mm. i did the same for the songs as well i kind of looked up you know what they were about and stuff but after i'd written my notes and listened to it i thought yeah because if you i because if you read things up and then listen it can like distort your yeah view. yeah so i think uh going in in as as red said uh in the dark hmm. um is is a good way to go um right well shall we dive into it then yeah, let's go. Right, so um, as with the last episode, we're going to go track by track. Uh, so, you know, we'll have variously deep discussions, uh, depending on how much we have to say on each one. And then at the end, we'll probably be given an overall rating and sort of, you know, there's, there, there's, there's not a massive structure to this. But let's dive straight in to the first track from the album, Alternate Route to Vulcan Street. I love it. I generally think that's one of the best openers to an album. I think it really sets the mood and it's like you you don't know where that's the thing. I, I would say that for the whole album in general, you don't know where it's going and that I that's why I really like um, I, I completely yeah. agree. It was a great start to the album. It the way it like opened, it felt like the start of a day. I don't know, there was something about the orchestralness of it. I've actually, I've actually, I actually thought as well that it's almost like a proto resistance era Mewes. This track, kind it of, felt like yeah. the orchestral um, things in resistance. So I was big fan of this track. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I see what you mean when you say it's not like the start of a day because I got like the start of a movie. It felt like kind of like an opening scene of a movie mm. to me, like with it. The- start credits rolling so that's interesting we both went to that kind of similar place yeah mm. i i what i i quite liked as well um obviously i i think uh you know we, we'll all sort of focus on uh instrumental parts the kind of we uh dear to most and stuff and i the the one thing i took away from this is that like i quite liked how crunchy and on point and like sort of trained like the drums were if that makes sense they were kind of just like they they were a constant there there was no like delineation and like it kind of makes it feel like thing it 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 sounds a little bit like you know like a roller coaster going up to like a thing it's like you know sort of like just chugging along so Uh, it's very experimental as well i i was gonna say like and this is gonna be a theme throughout the album but i thought Super Furry Animals was something completely different to what I got on this album, and I'm so happy they're what they are on this album, because it was... Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm 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 with you there, and that kind of, like, it's... 
I I think my expectation because it appeared in like um, Welsh lessons and stuff, it kind of felt a little bit like the Cool Cymru push in that a lot of the a lot of the ways they try to help you know make us learn Welsh is to be like, hey, here's some cool uh you know sort of pop culture references that the kids are like, and it was always super furry animals, and I always thought they were the lamest band ever. Because it was like, <laughs> oh god, they're probably just like really bog standard pop that it's mm. just pushed because they're Welsh and it's like I don't I don't care I never gonna listen. I, yeah, I went into this thinking they were going to be indie pop and I came out like oof, completely <clears throat> different. But yeah, yeah, it's weird though because like I remember like uh, off off topic, but like in school I remember we were told to like practice a song from Blade Runner. And I was like, oh, what the hell is this song, right? But now, having watched Blade Runner and listened to this awesome soundtrack, you just you have a more of appreciation for it. So I think it's just when you're a kid and I, you I, don't well, appreciate it. Like, I, I think as well, though, it, it, it's a compelled thing because, like, it, it's the same as, like, when, when we would go through a book in English lessons that, like, being told you have to read this and you have to read this to this certain, like, time frame and stuff is like, ugh. Yeah. But if you'd picked it up on your own, you it might have been like, out of it, yeah. "Yeah, you'd have been like, oh, I like this book. This is good." But like, you know, it's compelling. But yeah, on topic. Uh, so Vulcan Street, I looked, at, I looked it up, and it's uh, it is an actual street in uh, Wales, and it's in uh, Aberystwyth. Whether oh. that has any, you know, like, well, it, they could have just put that name, but you, you know. I wouldn't no, be surprised, but, you know, though. It, it it feels like something no. they'd have done. Sort of like, you know. Because, it, well, it's either that or there's some kind of Star Trek reference I'm not getting. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, well, uh, so that has covered the first track. Uh, so we're going to continue onwards into the second track of the album, Sidewalk Surfer Girl, uh, spelt S-E-R-F-E-R. Uh, I'll have written them on the screen anyway. But yeah, um, I... I really quite like this. I I thought it was yep. it was a banger. It's um, the chorus and stuff, and like the crunchy guitar, just like yeah, the guitar that comes crunchy. from nowhere and just like brrr, it's, oh, it's very powerful. This one screamed Radiohead to me. I got big Radiohead vibes on this track. Really? Mm, yeah, I, I kind of never I get that. Yeah, yeah, I. Again, I got to echo your sentiment. Like there was that, like it's soft acoustic, and then suddenly it's got some really hard strums of the electric guitar, and it's it's fantastic. Mm. It's it, it's genuinely because um, I I listened to this uh, just like on a walk basically, and the first track is like yeah, it's nice. It's kind of you know I guess they're an acoustic kind of band, cool whatever, bit synthy, and like by the end of this track, it's like oh. Oh wow! Okay, I wow! Like my expectations were genuinely quite changed by this. Um, right. If if no one else has got anything to add, shall we move on to the titular uh, title track of the album? M- mostly brackets drawing close brackets rings around the world, uh, which obviously the album was named after. I'm gonna say at the start of the track, it perfectly merges from the last track. And mm. I, I like it when albums do that. Yeah. It's, uh, and so this, this personally for me is one of the highlights of the album. I oh, think. yeah. For sure. Um, it's very. Oh, oh. and I'm, I'm sorry. I was waiting for you to finish before I oh. came back in with my hot take, but you oh, guys okay. carry on. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. I, I, I personally got some kind of big ELO vibes from it. Um, yeah, I, I, I could see that. It's like the guitar and and the, uh, and the piano, but also like the harmonising in the background from the other singers. This is like, it just it really gives me a big yellow push. I well, appreciate I... the sampling as well. Yeah. Um, well, I uh, yeah, go on. I was I was just gonna say uh, they they've done some they did some like sampling of voices here. Uh, people speaking and t- yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it was like people speaking different languages on the phone. Oh yeah, and it was I like a, like almost like a telephone call or something like that. Yeah, I I, yeah. I like that, and um, it just shows how eclectic uh, super furry animals are in mm. terms in terms of genres. 
And obviously it was... This is where you feel the neo-psychedelia in this track. Mm. This is where it kind of starts. Yeah, know? this... To me, this gave me hippie sci-fi vibes, if that makes sense. So it's like... I mean, so the, the lyrics... This is one of the only uh, songs I looked up the lyrics for, I'll admit. But... So they had a lot... Now, there was a reference, right? There's two references here I was quite enjoyed. One of them is about glowing sheep. Now, I think... And th- this may not be correct, but in North Wales, after the Chernobyl disaster, radioactive like ash and stuff obviously was blasted for miles and carried on the wind. And in North Wales, we had glowing sheep for a while because oh. they... and... it would not surprise me considering how political this album yes. is. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it, it was on the news and stuff. Like, I, it didn't last long, and like, I think the sheep were like very, very mildly radiated for a time but it, it like it, it wasn't an issue but the sheep genuinely glowed at night um well, the album uh, the song actually talks about uh like because i'm pretty sure they mentioned cloning on the on the, yeah. the lines so and yeah they cloned sheep in like was it 1997 yeah that there's that as well it's um and the, so the right the other reference is tenuous i think this may not me be what they meant but it could be. There's a reference to Tetsuo 2. Now, after Googling it, it appears to be a reference to the sequel to Tetsuo, The Iron Man, which is oh. a cyberpunk cult classic Japanese film. Um, and, like, it, I think it is that because it mentions Tetsu- we became Tetsuo 2 or something, and the whole Tetsuo thing is that he he's a man who's obsessed with machines bolting onto his body and stuff. Mm. So it, it's like, it's got a sci-fi, and it strikes me as like one of those weird cult classic films they'd have like discovered and being like, oh my god, that's so weird, you know. So I've actually seen that, and ah. I can a hundred percent believe that, considering especially Griff Reese, who wrote most of these songs, hmm. went on to for Neon Neon, which was all about concept albums over, like, books and ah. the life of people and stuff like that. So, I can 100% believe that, Ridian. Nice. Hey, there we are. Cool. I, I, I'm I, glad that did turn out, because otherwise I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> Tetsuo 2 was, like, a, a shuttle they sent up, like Japan sent up in the 90s, or maybe just an idiot, but no. I'll have to look that one up. Uh, Tim, you said you had yeah. something to say about this. Well, I don't want to bring it down, but this is my least favourite song of the album. I could not stand listening to it. Oh. I don't know why, but I couldn't get past the like the consecutive like I guess it's like a hook where they go rings around the it was oh it was like I don't know why rings around the world it was I don't know it struck me the wrong way and every time I listened to it because I listened to it a few times to see if it was like if it was just me having like an immediate reaction, but. I found it hard to get to the end of this one. It kind of bugged me. Do you think it was too poppy? Uh, too or... Brit poppy, maybe. It kind of had a very Brit pop feel. This one did to me, but which I just, I don't mind Brit pop, but it's not like it's something I'm against. It's just that one something about the chorus of this song yeah. just hmm. grinded I mean, on me. It's like, very, to think of it. It's, I don't very, know. it's very ELO T Rex. The chorus, yeah, it's kind of like the the you know like we're gonna repeat this twelve times or something like. Well, you could just imagine them dancing with uh, Jarvis Cocker or something <laughs> like Rain Ray. <laughs> yeah. uh. right. Well, uh, so after that, uh, that after that controversial statement, we move on to the fourth track. It's not the end of the world? Question mark. Uh, that's why I said it like that. Um, and so kind of a bit. Following on from Tim's uh, slightly negative thing here, whilst I kind of thought the chorus was kind of catchy, it this one's kind of meh for me. Uh, I I, thought I like this one. Yeah, I think I this like is uh, this was a a nice a nice one to listen to after the last one. I don't know. This one had a strangely chill feel to it, considering mm. the title. I was like, oh yeah, this is uh, this is quite um, chilled out. I think it, there's something about it that kind of 
makes me feel like I'm being put into a false sense of security. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, it's it's not the end of the world. No, it's not. You're right. But I don't know. And this one, I don't know. I don't know if it was just me. Um, but looking at the title, I kind of hit different listening to it now. Yeah. I was thinking like, hmm, yeah. It's, um, I, I guess, kind of topical. Also, I, I, this is just an aside, but Griff Rees, especially on this track, the slight part where he's singing, where he sounds quite a lot like Chris Martin from Coldplay. I don't know why, but like... He, Interesting take. He, he's just like, there's a few like parts where it's just like, that sounds, sounds like... If I hear this in a shop and it was just this track, I'd be like, there's Coldplay, huh? Maybe oh, I don't know. I think that's a worse off take than Tim's. <laughs> I, I actually got Daft Punk volumes for this one. Really? Um, mm. You know, on Discovery, towards mm. the end, the tracks kind of get low tempo, sort of. Mm. There was something about the chilled out volumes of those like other tracks on Discovery that I felt... It's got a kind of well. space feel to it. I can see where you're coming from with that. I don't know. It, it did have a kind of... I felt like I was like on a spaceship or something listening to this one. So I guess I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Right. Well, let's move on to the fifth... I think it's the fifth track. I'm losing count now. Which is yeah. Receptacle for the Respectable. This song slaps. So, yeah. So this, I this... See, I didn't like this one either. So this one, I mean, I, I think I know why as well, Tim, because this one, much like Rings Around the World, gave me super strong ELO Beatles vibes. Like, yeah, it, it's yeah. all about the backing harmonies um, and the kind of, like, the synth. Like, this, this really does sound like it's, like, a 70s... I mean, Psychedelia, obviously. This is... Well, I was getting... Then. Beach Boys vibes, like yeah. from like yeah, pet sounds, absolutely. Mm, you know yeah. the vocals, yeah. And I've got a fun fact, right? Oh, so about this track, right? So during the subdued moments, I, which I really like, like uh, I like how a bit, I like the song structure to it all. It's very um, hypnagogic. I think that's that is a word. Um, okay. uh, but in those subdued moments, like uh, like in the bridge. You hear like some chewing sounds, and I was like, "What? What is that?" So after I listened to the whole album, I did a, a quick Google search, and I found that the uh, the the person who was chewing uh, a carrot is Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I this. What I. I don't know where to start Why with that one. Why was he there? What? What? Did they, what? Wait, sorry. Was this live recorded, or did they get a sample of him doing the camera? Yeah, well, basically, um, I think what it is, they um, they helped him on uh, working on an album, and then they were like, hey, can you can you return the favour? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, sure. And so what they what they did, they uh, they called him, and uh, they he just ate vegetables on the phone and they recorded it and that's it wow jesus christ <laughs> well called uh, dan fun. holy shit well like genuine <laughs> i i vaguely remember hearing <laughs> chewing but i'd have been like okay cool oh uh okay uh so not only did he eat carrot he also ate celery ah see so. if you so if you're listening at home see if you can uh work out which one's carrot and which one's celery let us know because I'm, I'm not spending my time doing that. But <laughs> what did <laughs> Thank you guys? You, Dan. What did you guys think of the hard, like electronic? At the oh end? yeah, the like death metal kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was I. I mean, this is I think the start of them peeking their head and being like, "Oh, what? We're, we're about to go weird. Like, prepare <laughs> yourself. Sit, yeah, sit down. We're, like a, we're going strange. The drugs are kicking in, like boys. Like a seventies. <laughs> It's a seventies Doctor Who episode where the bad guys show up. That's very much yeah. what I got at the end. It's um I've gotta yeah, say with this album out. <laughs> I've gotta say with this album so far, it's not manufactured in the slightest. Oh no. Mm. No, it is No. Uh, yeah. Opposite I... to uh, the Black Pink album we listened to last week. Very much <sighs> the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Very much the opposite. I actually looked it up. Uh like how these were made, these sort of tracks. Um, 
the ones, most of them are Griff Reese, and what he did was he'd come up with a a song, he'd play the piano on some acoustic guitar, take it forward and say, right, let's jam to this and see what works. Ah. And that was their kind of way of making songs for this album, it seems. It was a jam session. Nice. Well, that, so that that fits perfectly, actually, into what I was going to lead in with uh, to the next track. E, touch sensitive. And again, brackets for the E. Um, which... what, what bugged me before you continue, I need to bring this up. Why is it circular brackets for drawing rings around the world and then it's square brackets for A, touch sensitive? Oh, is that I like even a picked up on that. decision or is that like a Spotify thing or it, it bugged me? <laughs> Could be both. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Uh, but yeah, uh, touch sensitive, uh, literally leading exactly into Tom's thing. I got the sense of this was like a jam track, as in like sort of someone came up with a cool melody on the synth and stuff, and they were like, "Ooh, let's throw this in and kind of, you know." And yeah. it, it reminded me yeah. a little bit, Dan. You may agree with me here of Porter's Head. I got really strong Porter's Head vibes the first like minute or two. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, apparently, that that I got, um... like modern gorillas from this like very modern like the last few albums of gorillas mm. which is interesting because someone mentioned at the start about mm. them going on to work with them but well, yeah that's what i got from i was thinking this is like a like almost like a hip-hop instrumental so i can imagine like mm. mf doom or something spitting out rhymes or something to this it's yeah uh but um yeah apparently um there's they used um a sample uh, um, uh, uh, um, yes, of 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 a lady enjoying herself. Um, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> do we do we know where it's from, Dan? Did you see where the sample was from, or was it just? Well, it says uh, it contains a sample from um, the Stooges. Um, um, oh, right. The song called Anne. Oh, okay. Cool. Wow. So they sampled another band. That's cool. Okay. I've I've not heard that song by the Stooges. I've heard one or two of theirs, but so. Hmm. This is one of the two tracks on the album uh, that was not written by Griff Reese. It was written by the keyboardist uh, Kian Kiran. Oh. Kian Kiran. Yeah. Ah. So that was one of his two songs on the album that he uh, yeah. kind of contributed. Hmm. It's like uh, it's like it makes me uh, think of in the Slurps album when. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you would do your little instrumental things, Ridian. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of just yeah. Th- this well, this is basically what I wrote down uh, to summarize it is an experimental break, which is like they'd done the like mm. songs of the words and stuff, and they were like, we don't really have much for this, but we're just gonna like record, see where it goes, and put it in the middle as like a bit of a refresher, kind of like ooh, mm. you know. I mean, to me, it's like the end of a like if it feels like a record like a vinyl yeah. that be like the end of side a and then you'd flip over or hmm. shoot doris day yes <laughs> so shoot doris day is the seventh track maybe eighth i can't remember i've i've really yeah, lost it, now. it um but yeah this one i um i pretty chill and it, it's very catchy the chorus is like uh it's just like i hated the chorus uh, oh oh <laughs> <laughs> it's another one of those Catchy choruses. The, the catchy choruses of an album, they grieve on me, and I don't know why. This one wasn't wasn't as bad. It didn't hit me as as bad as the other ones, but I wasn't a huge fan of this one either. Well, I, I quite like this. Uh, the, the thing is, for, for, for those who don't know, Doris Day was like a famous actress in the uh, 1950s. She was in this... Um, oh, she was in the music... Calamity Jane. She was in Calamity Jane. Was she in some like you and- was it her? Doris Day? Maybe another one. I can't like remember. It. No, that's that's Marilyn Monroe. Oh, right? Marilyn Monroe. Sorry, yeah. And uh, like the lyrics, I really like the the lyrics in this uh, track. So it starts off: "Shoot Doris Day, out of the way, in the pouring rain, sentimentality pours as Jimmy Stewart ignores her question." And then it just has like that's what uh, the lyrics are very out there, like. My favorite line is on this uh, uh, song. It's "I'll just binge and crack and tiramisu." Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, that was. Uh... Yeah, I I did kind of like how. So this one broke a little bit with whilst they were like repetitive choruses, 
near the end, they kind of like I they did the thing I kind of like where it's the same like rhythm and stuff, but they change the words but still fit to the rhythm and sort of mm-hmm. it kind of breaks I, down. I got a few like interesting things. So it's called Shoot Doris Day, and I was like, well, why would you want to do that? But it's actually about shooting her on film. Ah, uh, but uh, maybe that's intentionally misleading though. You're like, what? What? Yeah. And then it's like... Um. Also, if. <laughs> Another reference, yeah, um, especially of the time. Uh, there's a character mentioned called Victor Panache in the song. Yeah, I was, I was on who that guy was. It's meant to be Peter Mandelson, the spin doctor for the Labour Party at the time. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. A, a tiny so, capsule. Okay, I got, I got it up now. Victor Panache lost his moustache. In a PR war. Uh, yeah, m- makes sense because PR. Um, for reference, uh, if you've um, if you don't know who that is, if you've seen the thick of it, the yeah. main character in that, the spin doctor in that, is basically meant to be Peter Peter Mandelson. So ah, yeah. bringing it back to some pop culture as well. GG. Hey. Uh, right. Well, let's. That let, let's move on to a miniature break. Uh, it's the next track is called Miniature, uh, which is forty I'm seconds take long. A wild it's... stab in the dark and say this is the other one that the keyboardist wrote. Yeah, yeah, you're one hundred percent correct. <laughs> so as it happens, I like this was really nice. I like this. You know, Dan brought up the uh, oh end of side A thing. That is literally what I wrote to describe Miniature. Is like. This feels like they had a minute left on side A of the vinyl, and they're like, uh, fuck it, let's throw something in there. And it's like, hey, there we go. Yeah, I got, like, um, palate cleanser. That's what I wrote down yeah. for this one. Mm. Because it's like, when, you've, when you're having, like, a little watermelon bowl between your courses. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, just, it was quite refreshing. It was nice. I like this one. Yeah. And it, it, sets you up for, it sets you up for no sympathy. Yes, so no sympathy, the next track. Uh, <laughs> the, the way I've described it at the start is pretty dark song, a literal fuck you song. Yes, I, I, I love it because it's, uh, it's he goes so like, mean. I've it's... no adjectives for you. This, <laughs> is, is, <laughs> this is, in my opinion, the best song on the album. I, I love like this song. Uh, well, I so it's it, it's in the in the running for me as well. It's I don't mm. know if it's my favorite, but no sympathy for me was definitely. It also for some reason <laughs> reminds me of the Firefly theme, as in the TV show Firefly, uh, with all the like bluesy guitar and stuff, and sort of some of the uh, the chorus is just it, it gives me big Firefly. See what theme. you mean. Yeah, it's a, didn't yeah. get it when I listened to it, but now that you mention it, that's what you mean. The thing about this song is, I wanted to like it, and I really appreciated the lyrics, but something about the way the lyrics are put into the song really didn't fit in with me. I, d- I don't know. I, I was like, oh, these are really cool lyrics, but the way they're put in the song just... I I, I, I do have a pet Work peeve that, yeah, the way the... Uh, because obviously it's all about um, phonetics and sort of like the beats of a word... That like, uh, like the one of the times they say sympathy, it's sympathy, and it's like, yeah, it, they're trying yeah. to force it a little bit much. It's like, oh, oh, it's almost there, it's almost there, but it's like you didn't have to rush it. It sounds a bit weird now. That uh, the dark electronic at the end. Oh man, so like surprise. Yeah, so that so I that I got really big effects twin vibes there, like. It really, oh, yeah. it really felt like yeah. Efex Twin had just taken over the track midway through, and it's like, "Hey, here's one of mine." Sort of just. <laughs> I did literally think that a different song had started when, mm. I, when I first listened to this. I thought, "Oh, a what? Oh, it's the same song. What? Because it is like it's almost seven minutes long." I was like, Ooh. "I kind of think it could have been," and I, I don't know yeah. if I might have enjoyed it more if it was two separate tracks. I don't know. I like, I like the. I like the mix of it because I went into it and it sounded like a country song, hmm. but mm. the li- I, lyrically it was like I will say opposite. one thing. I kind of wish they'd gone into more, and this is this is purely my own like kind of 
I wish they'd done it, not really a big yeah. criticism, is they started messing with... They still had the bluesy guitar and, like, mixed in some sample stuff. And I was like, oh, I like where this is going. But, like, I just wish the guitar had featured more through all the electronic stuff because it's... Oh, yeah. The, like, blend of, like... You know, sort of just just hand, you know, like physical instruments and like hard electronic mixed and sampled together is great, and it, it just felt like ah, oh, did you have to like drop it? But I don't know. Part of me feels like it might have been a mess. Just uh, oh, it'd on, have been on different. one hand, like in the mix, like in the mix, like trying Probably. to like I can like yeah, I can imagine it. And then like. Yeah, I I don't think we can we can, but I I don't know. I really like the track. I like because when you when you're hearing it first time, you know, I I really like the whole um, uh, cowboy vibes I had, and then mm-hmm. when it it completely left turn there, I was just like, oh oh oh, we're going in this direction, okay, and then uh, <laughs> I and there's no hope uh, going back now, you know, and it's just uh, that's why I really like it. It's very unpredictable. So are you? Um, <laughs> I've written in my notes. Did you yeah. guys write this? Like, did the <laughs> Slurps make this song? Because it felt... Man, the, I mean, the, like, the last yeah. the last two minutes were, I think, probably the height of this album, Psychedelia. Like, this mm. was... It basically, if we were to sort of see this album as a drug trip, this is, like, the most intense peak where, like, just... Yeah, Ev- everything is jelly. The bit where you see the devil in the mirror, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th- this mm. is kind of like the oh, oh dear, and sort of everything, everything starts like you know calming, calming down a bit, sort of. Uh, but I mean, you could say really that instrumental piece w- juxtaposes itself to the rest, the start of the track. Oh, right. they... I wanted to make that. Oh ah, shit! Ah, okay. Oh. Uh... Okay. Well. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna come straight out. I fucking love this track. This oh, track was great. easily my yeah. favorite on this album. Okay, it's banger. It's it's catchy in a good way. You're not like the other. I will say ones. it's like we're really catchy, and I love the bit where like the robotic voice comes in because you've got this like <laughs> melody that's kind of like kind of like tropical island, and then you've got hmm. the like robotic voice, and it is obviously quite a juxtaposition. I... But oh man, I just love this track. I don't know why, right? No, I love this track as well, but uh, it reminds me of that uh, that Christmas song, "A Driving Home for Christmas." By <laughs> yeah, Driving Home for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, I can see what you, I see what you mean. This but, this reminded yeah. me a bit of um, sort of Super Furry Animals doing a cruise sort of cabaret evening. The kind of like the, mm. you know, it's got that, but then it's just like all weird and experimental as well. It's uh, it's it's a very weird one. Sorry, Dan. What what were you gonna say? Well, I like I like uh, Tim said. I think that the robotic vocals are really. It's just really odd, and I I, I but I, I really love it. Like um the 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 lyrics and the songs don't don't match. Does that does that yeah. make sense? But yeah. like. Because you got a happy, you got a happy kind of music, and then you got um... rising house prices and stuff. As <laughs> yeah, well. the robotic voice. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it's a trip. This one It's definitely a sort of a it's weird complete one eighty from no sympathy, and I love it. I mm. complete, I love yeah. it. Oh, highlight of the good. album for sure. Uh, right, let's move on to the penultimate, penultimate one: presidential suite. Uh, now, which is a bit of a slow ballad, sort of following on. <laughs> I got another fun fact. Okay. So we've got another um, special guest on this album. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a John Cale. Whoa! All right then. Well, so actually, yo, this is really fitting because John Cale, obviously Daniel, uh, as we all know, is also Welsh. Yes, and he's in the. One of the most influential bands ever, Velvet Underground. A legend. And, yes, and uh, he's he's also known as like he's quite a hot shot producer. Uh, like you, you may that's the thing you may not hear of John Cale, but you will probably hear a lot of his well, music. You, and, I, I'm pretty sure most people have heard influence. most people have heard one of his songs, and that is his cover of. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Shrek movie. The first Shrek movie was John Keel. That is who performed Hallelujah. So, I didn't, so, I didn't know that I needed that information. <laughs> I did, I, wow. I, oh, okay. I didn't know that. So, so what did he contribute to this, Dan? Was he... He played uh, the uh, keyboard. Uh, they mm. did ask him if he could do like strings because, as you know, John Cale is well known for playing um, strings mm. like uh, uh, Venus and Furs. Ah. Uh, like, that's a... Yeah. So they asked him to do that, but he was like, um, nope, I'll, uh, I'll do things my way. And they were like, okay. <laughs> This song, again, is <laughs> instrumentally deceptive of the lyrics. Uh, I really like it, though. Mm. Um, I like I really that. like this one. Yeah, it's a great one. Like, um, this is my quote... second, probably one of my second favourite, I'd say. Quote, um, um, we need to know if he came inside her mouth. And that's about <laughs> Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, of course. In the presidential so... suite. Course. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. It feels like the album is definitely winding down with this track. Well, hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys agree. Yeah, no, you you can tell the tempo. Basically, after No Sympathy, you can definitely tell it was an intentional tempo kind of come like. Down. Yeah, it, it's. Well, yeah, it's a come down of a trip, basically. It's sort of hmm. a sit yeah. back. It's all over now. Like, you know, it's. Hmm. Uh, right, and so we're on to the penultimate track. Run, Christian, run. Um, and I'm going to say something I didn't expect to say after the first time I listened to this. Uh, this is my favourite track of the album. Uh, I imagine you like the theme, right? Well, so it's... Well, yeah, so um, we'll go into that in a second. But, like, it's strange. So Presidential Suite, I liked it, but I felt it was, like... It was quite slow and it it, it it didn't fully click with me, but I appreciate it. Mm. Run Christian Run is about the same tempo and for some reason really works. And like I think part of it is it sounds like a country and western song. And like and also massive shout out, the like instrumental build up at the end as well is um I know, it's just got basically it's got the bluesy aspects of no sympathy but taken taken to its to like its ending without any instrumental kind of uh, uh experimental kind of electronica but yes uh, d- sorry do you want to go into the I... theme of it tom <laughs> go ahead uh tom, sorry first. yes um all i was gonna say is that i really like the start of this song the most where it kind of builds up it had kind of like like you said like a bluesy western feel but also kind of had like a soundtrack feel to me like it sounded like it could be like the backing music of an episode of Twin Peaks or something because mm. it just had like that kind of orchestral feel of like it, it was almost scene setting which I, I guess you don't really get a lot with like music from like rock bands but yeah, yeah. it was really nice it, it felt like it was taking me to an actual place I yeah. think and in terms of that place uh <laughs> I feel this song, I completely agree with you, Tim. I feel like it could go... I feel, though, it could go in a Netflix documentary about Heaven's Gate. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Or, so, wait, so Jim Jones. So, did it... So, all right, I'm, I'm guessing... So, I didn't, I didn't pick up on the very specific, but I picked up on the cult theme, basically. Like... Well, mm. it's about cult suicides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of... It, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and, no, I um, I can't I, remember the exact lyric now, but it you know it's talking about like the other side and how happy it'll be and stuff. Hmm. It, yeah, it's definitely it's it it it's a weird one. Um, I mean, again, a juxtaposition of sort of like it sounds like a country ballad, but it's it's about sort of like. The impeding death of people joining like a weird Christian cult, basically. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, no, that that was definitely my highlight. Uh shall we move on to the last one? Unless anyone Yeah. Right, and the very last uh track and the closer of Rings Around the World is Fragile Happiness. Uh which I thought was a good closer. Um however, I think one of the least memorable tracks. 
on the album. Yeah, speaking. that's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. I it think... was it was solid, but mm. didn't stand out for me in any way. Yeah, I, I it's it's a weird one that one because you uh, run Christian run how that because it's it's quite long and you know it fades out to a nice thing uh, and then. And I'm wondering why they didn't close on that, but I feel like they mm. need... Because listening to that, and I think Fragile Happiness, like you needed something right at the end just to finish off. Because I think tracks 11, 12, and 13 are like the come down, basically. Mm. After... Because after um, Juxtaposed With You and No Sympathy, that, you know, there's a lot going on. And then I... And uh, I think you know, Super Fury Animals are like, right, it's going to be the end of the album. Let's let's, let's uh, slow it down for you guys now. Just to... very calm song to end yes. the album. Yeah. It, I mean, it does feel like sort of the end of maybe a gig, but not one of those like big stadium gigs, but like a a local venue. It was just like, hey, you know, thanks for coming out, guys. Here's one last song. You know. I will yeah. say, if they ever reformed, I'd see them. I'd go watch them. Yeah. I, um... Yeah. Uh, anything else to add on Fragile Happiness? So that closes out our track-by-track track, uh, dive into Rings Around the World. And now it's time for the overall segment. So basically, I, I want us all to just give a... a kind of closing statement on your view of the album as a whole um, and stuff. I shall begin first um, by saying something uh, in that, to be honest, this album grew on me a lot because the first time I listened to it, one or two tracks kind of stuck out, but the rest of them I genuinely thought were quite average. And it's like, yeah, this is fine. Um, but after a second or third listen, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I was just in a, like, different you know headspace as it were or something but it really grew on me uh like each song really stood out on its own and stuff and um run christian run especially the first time i listened to it i genuinely remember thinking it's, it's going on a while i mean yeah it's, it's kind of cool oh i agree with you there like i i that was my f- first take on it hmm. and then gradually i you know because yeah. I, I, I generally put on notes like this is, you know, it wasn't my, my favourite. But then when I listened to it a few times again, I was like, no, oh, actually, come to think of it, it is actually a really good track. So, so yeah. the, that's the thing. It, it, this album, it, it's, it does grow on you, I hmm. feel like. It, I think you can't, you have to have multiple listens to really fully appreciate it and... um whether that's a good thing or not, but it's um, you gotta live in it basically, and that's why it, why I like around it about it. I um, yeah, I completely agree with you. I listened to it multiple times; it's got better each time. Um, I absolutely love this album. It's a fantastic piece. I I love the fact that it's basically a jam session. Hmm. There's nothing manufactured about it. They're not trying to hit, you know, they're not trying to hit certain notes to, like, appeal to certain people. And that's what I was worried Super Furry Animals would be. Yeah. Um, obviously, I love the, like, I love it when there's, like, political, like, themes to albums. That's why I like Mirrors so much. And um, honestly, I would compare them a lot to Mirrors. Um Maybe not entirely in terms of how they, you know, in terms of genre, Mm. but they feel a lot like them in terms of content, I think. I feel like a bit... uh, I think if you really like uh, Super Fury Animals, I think, Tom, you will really like Flaming Lips. Because when I listened to this, it reminded me of... um, Ah, the Soft Bulletin, that's the one. Well, because when I listen to that, uh, when I listen to this, it reminded me of them. So I feel like um, that's a, a good shout out. If if uh, so, if you yeah. like Super Furry Animals, go and listen to Flaming Lips. Well, I know I need to go and listen to some of their other albums now. Um, in terms of like how this album is rated critically, Enemy thinks it's its 
their worst album. Ooh. But everyone else thinks it's their best. Hmm. So it's, uh, I guess it's one of those things, this album, you, like, like Tim really disliked certain songs. Hmm. What, what was we your... really loved them. I think overall, album? it's a really strong album. It is a strong album overall. I really enjoyed it. The few that stuck out as duds for me, <laughs> I can overlook because of how good the other tracks were. Um, if I were to give it a rating, uh, I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10. Uh huh. Uh, so I I basically on the fly uh, whilst I was writing this changed mine from a seven to an eight because I kind of realised there were enough tracks there that I'd listen to on their own as well. Mm. So I I'm giving it an eight out of ten. Uh, Tom Dan, I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Ooh, uh, okay. Ooh. Fantastic album. I loved it throughout. Uh, there wasn't a song. I didn't like really. There was obviously like I thought some of the songs were weaker, but I still like them. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a nine and I'll happily put this album on to listen while I'm doing things in the future. Dan? Um I'm gonna give it a solid eight. Nice. That's uh, well, I mean <laughs> it's th- it, this is quite the uh, step up from our previous uh Oh yeah. Episode then. Yes. Uh, it was kind of fives and sixes across the board or whatever. Um but yeah, like honestly, genuinely um kudos to you there Tom because when you first recommended Super Furry Animals, I I wasn't against the idea, but I was pretty ambivalent. It's like, "Ah, oh, it's kind of like telling people that let's go Compl- listen to Steps or something, you know." Yeah, completely like... <laughs> different. Oh fuck, expecting. don't ask me what my next album is. <laughs> Uh, well, so actually, that does bring us on to then the next episode. Uh, so, as with last time, oh, it's, hold on, it's hold on. Banger, Before banger, you go to the next oh, episode, banger. sorry, I, I've got two bangers to nominate. Uh, yes, sorry, I completely forgot about that. Sorry. So now we're on to the certified banger. So, uh, in this part of Listen Toys, we can nominate up to two songs we think are bangers. And if enough of us agree, it'll go on the official Listen Toys Certified Banger playlist. Uh, so these are, to be nominated for a Certified Banger, this is a track you would show someone or send someone on its own, no context, and just say, this is a good track. This is a good song, you know, without any context. Uh, so hmm. what song would you guys like to nominate? I, just I got two with songs you. I want to nominate. I juxtapose with you 100%. Yeah, and 100%. also Run Christian Run. Okay. I'm Yeah, I'm going to agree with you, juxtapose to you, and I ag- we definitely should have a song off this album on there. Uh, I'm going to give my second one to No Sympathy. Okay. I Well, so I also go with Run Christian Run. That was my only one. But that means officially, and I wish I had some kind of like bell I could ring or something, that means the very first track on the... Uh, Listen Toys Certified Banger Playlist is going to be Juxtapose With You from Super Furry Animals. Uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. check the description below. I'll have made the playlist by then. Um, we'll be adding all need certified bangers onto this list. Uh, and obviously, hopefully I'll have put a link obviously to this album as well, just in case. I mean, hopefully you'd have listened to it at the start because you wouldn't have understood what we were on about. But uh, yeah, that has made Listen Toys history then. Juxtapose with you got a 75% approval rate, which is quite the achievement. Did Run Christian Run also get three votes? I Wait, think it did. did. Wait, I... What did you vote yeah. for, Dan? You didn't give your Oh, votes. I didn't vote. Uh, Wait, no, yeah, you, you uh, did, but you, um, I don't think it... Wait, hang on, sorry. Tom, did you vote for Run Christian Run as well? No, I vote Juxtapose and No Sympathy. Right, okay. I, I, did say, I, I didn't say anything. I think... Uh, yeah, run Christian run. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, well, that's two right. songs. Then. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. So, so that is also run Christian run. I well, man, uh, that is. Interest, I think. Uh, two certified bangers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well done to Super Furry Animals there for uh, getting on to our playlist. I'm sure all all I'm sure um, Griff uh, is sort of he's getting a text right now and he's like. Oh, well, bloody hell, Listen Toys gave me a really good rating. That's nice. I'm sure, I'm sure. 
Uh, right, so um, I know it is the official time. So last episode, I put random, uh, well, all three of your names in a random generator kind of website thing, and we came up with Tom. So I also took down the other two names in order uh, to save me from doing it this time. So the next person deciding next episode's album is Tim. Uh, so. <gasps> Tim, hopefully you've prepared right. uh, an album or two. Uh, obviously, just one, but one of you know. So go ahead. No, I've already told you it's um, Steps' entire discography. <laughs> no, Yay. I'm joking. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I did have to have a thing because a, a couple of albums came to head, but the basing my um, decision on the last couple of albums we've gone for, I think they're both quite well known. And I think the one I've come up with is quite on the other end of the spectrum. The only reason I came across this album is because I accidentally found one of their songs when I was looking for a different song and listened to it and thought, hey, this is a banger. So there's only one song I've listened to on this album. But I think if we give the whole album a listen to, um, I think it'd be quite interesting. So the album that I've gone for is Deadheads by Cannibal Kids. Okay, uh, I can't see a few of them. So nope, same. Uh, how I'm do you? Not how surprised. do you spell it? Um, so deadheads, all one word. It is on Spotify. Deadheads, all one word, and Cannibal Kids is spelled like Cannibal Kids. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm. You've got me really intrigued here. This is. Uh, I'm excited. This is. This is exactly what Listen Toys was made for. Uh, listening to an album I never would have heard of. So, what was it? The song again? Sure. Cannibal Kids? That's the name of the album. No, uh, the band the is called Cannibal Kids. And the album is called Deadheads. Ah, right. Wow. Okay. Right. So, we, like last time, are going to go off now and listen to those uh, songs on that album uh, and be completely separate and not discuss this until the next episode of Listen Toys. Uh, so, if you'd like to listen along or play along at home, I'll be leaving a link to the Spotify uh, link and maybe a YouTube thing if they've officially put their album up there. Uh, down below as well, if you'd like to listen to the Cannibal Kids album, we'll be listening to for next episode. And stay tuned, hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll be discussing that live on Listen Toys. It's not live, actually, though, because I'm uploading it, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, right, <laughs> well... Thank you, uh, guys, for joining me. This has been really fun. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Great. Thank you for a banger of an album, Tom. Yeah, Do you absolutely. Yeah. Or then pleasure. Um, right. So, on that note, we're going to go off now and do other stuff. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As I mentioned, there will be another Listen Toys episode coming up soon. I'll probably be putting up other videos between them. May even sneak in a cheeky draw toys or talk toys or something between them. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But until next time, Hoil Vaur. Listen Toys.